this is going to be uh, a talking video. What I have here is a preset that, or a patch that I call Preset Morpher. And what it does is it communicates with your pedals or your synthesizers or anything that takes MIDI uh, over MIDI and it can morph between two presets. Um, and the presets are stored in the patch itself rather than on the pedal. So you may see, you know, some names show up here. I'm using an H9. Uh, I decided to use my favorite H9 um, algorithm, which is the undulator, uh, to show this off. But the presets are stored on the Zoya, and they'll be stored between power-ups and power-downs. So there's a little bit of setup at the beginning, but once you have it set up, it's pretty easy to do some interesting stuff. So the first thing is that there are eight parameters across the top and it can store eight presets of those parameters. Um, and the first thing that you would do is go to this second page called MIDI and set your MIDI CC outs to whatever your uh, device is looking for. So I have these mapped to channel 1 and controller 22, those are sort of the defaults for the H9. Um, you know, and that's just how it's going to arrive to you, but, but obviously your setup may be very different. You may need to change the channel numbers, that sort of thing. Um, also on this page, worth noting, are the audio ins and outs. I'm not using this as an audio through right now, uh, but it will pass audio. So that's the first step. You set your destination. And then you have these parameters. Uh, and if you see any of these buttons on the second row, these store the different presets. Um, if you see them lit up white, what you need to do is press this again and it will go back to a live view. Um, Once it's live, you'll be able to hear whatever is going on in the preset. I should do something else too. Um, my hand's going to be involved in this video too. So once it's live, these parameters will control different things on your device. Mix is probably a good one to turn up. Right? So I'm not touching the H9. I do have H9 control open over here just as a reference. Um, but what's happening is that these parameters are uh, being sent directly from Zoya out to the H9. And if I, you know, when, if I was using this patch on my own instead of preparing it for publication, I'd rename these parameters so I could see what's going on. So the second row stores different presets. How do you store a preset? It's with this fourth row down here. So if I wanted to store that preset, I could just press there. You may see, let me see a white light and it'll store. Um, and now I can uh, what I've done with the first preset is stored everything zeroed out. I like using that as a reference point. So, just dry signal. Uh, but then I can go back to that preset whenever I want, and I can store up to eight presets. So that's the, the major utility, and I'll just talk for a second. I put this down here because I kept saving stuff inadvertently. So the workflow is a little bit backwards, you, you know, um, but I use these and these a lot more often, and I wanted to kind of keep this separate. So it's below these pixels that show the state of the preset. They'll show whatever is going on in that preset. 
So that first preset, like I said, everything zeroed out. So we have nothing on the pixels. Then I go to this. So here's where things can get really interesting. Uh, there are ways to automate this process, a, a number of them. I'm going to go through them one by one. First is a morph speed, which introduces a time constant slew. And what I mean by a time constant slew is that everything will morph between this preset and the next preset I select at a constant rate. So even if the change in one parameter is tiny and the change in another one is huge, uh, they'll both reach their final points at the same speed. So I'm going to go back to that one where everything's dry uh, in just a second here. So we have a good reference point. And I've set the morph speed. The morph speed goes up to 30 seconds, which is a really long time, but I thought some people might be into that. Um, between them and because these two are adjacent I can actually do that with the foot switches this foot switch will scroll forward through the patches or the presets and this one will scroll backwards so you know when you're storing presets it might be useful to think about which ones you might want to switch back and forth between with your foot rather than by pressing a button And the H9 kind of freaks out over here because it's trying to process a, a lot of, it's trying to display a lot of changes all at once, and it can't. Uh, so it gets uh, a little bit confused. Um, but, you know, it's processing all the MIDI just fine. So that's one way to control that morphing. Then next to the morph speed, and I should point out that the morph speed is bi-directional. And when you uh, use a negative speed, the morphine is exponential. So it'll just have a different curvature. Uh, and when it's positive, the morph speed will be linear. So everything will move in, in a, at a steady rate. So let's just try that again. Oops. Okay, so the next thing that you can do is there are three radio buttons down here. And what you can do is select inputs. I put those inputs on the third page and you can change those out if you wanted. I just chose three that I thought might be a convenient starting point. So one is an expression pedal I've got an expression pedal hooked up on the floor here. One is a MIDI CC in. It's set to CC10, which is used a lot for uh, MIDI expression, but that could be changed to anything else, and it could be changed to something like one thing I want to toy around with later on with this patch is using it with aftertouch um, on some of my synthesizers to sort of morph between two settings based on how much pressure I apply. Uh, and then this is just a pass through this value. Um, there's an LFO on the front page. I kind of put it there because I thought you might want to change the rate or the shape and just putting the LFO there makes that easy to do. Um, but again, you could replace that with anything. You could put a sequencer in there, envelope follower, whatever. So, you know, the idea is that the structure here is good but it's malleable to whatever your needs or, or interests are um, and you can select between those two options you could rename them if you change what's going in you know that's just renaming the module uh, but they're radio buttons so they select between one of those three options like I said I have an expression pedal hooked up
try the LFO, which is set to a square wave, which is pretty interesting because it just oscillates back and forth between those two things. Let's try a triangle. And we could, of course, choose a different preset. I, I don't know what these values are. I kind of saved them when I was playing around with a different uh, pedal. So let's see how they apply to... That one seems pretty subtle. So we could morph between... And it'll always morph, I should say, should have said this earlier, the morphing will always occur between the currently selected preset and the last selected preset. And that's true also if you go back to the live settings. You can go back to the live settings by pressing the preset that you're on again, and it'll go back and then it'll morph between the live settings and the preset that you were just on. So you can arrange these in certain ways if you want the stomp switches, but that doesn't limit you to, to what you can morph between. Um, we can change the speed. Let's morph fast. So we've still got our morph speed going on, so it's slewing between those, but we can turn that off by setting it to zero. So the other function that it has is it can automatically cycle through these presets. Um, I'm going to show that off now. You press this button and it'll start to do that. And you can set the speed with the stomp switch here, or it'll respond to MIDI clock. And obviously you could, you know, bring in a MIDI uh, a clock divider and instead of having this be controlled by CV you could attach a clock divider to the LFO so that it sort of morphed while the patches were changing. Uh, you can also set up a morph speed as it moves through things. So it's sort of like a smooth or relatively smooth change And then this last control on the front page preset number just lets you select how many presets you want to cycle through. And that's cycling either with this automated stomp switches, it'll determine the number that they cycle through. And they don't always agree, it seems. Oh no, they do. Sorry. Um, so that's the patch. Uh, you know, I, I just sort of thought um, originally it started with this idea of being able to morph between uh, some settings and then I thought well this would be an interesting way to store presets for another device um, you know and 
then the, the features just sort of grew from there. Uh, and, and just as a quick overview for anyone who's interested, the way that this is done is that there are sample and holds. Uh, this is the set of sample and holds for perimeter one, parameter one. Uh, and when you store a preset, the different buttons go to that sample and holds trigger input. Um, and it stores whatever that parameter is at at that moment. Um, and there, you know, these are just sort of banks of information. The sample and holds are used as sort of memory. Then uh, there's some logic that goes into how it cycles through things using a sample and hold counter. Um, this is the input for the LFO that clocks the automated scrolling. Uh, and then the other part is that it just sort of using some CV inverts and some more sample and holds. The way that it morphs is by comparing the current patch position to the previous patch position. So, um, you know, it, it, it samples the previous patch. Uh, this, these are just switches that the sample and holds connect to um, that allow it to s move through the different settings. So, you know, it, it then basically subtracts from the current preset and compares that to the sample and hold. Uh, and that's how you get the, the LFO stuff. The time constant SLU uses a slightly different version because it um, actually subtracts the current value or the saved value from the current value so that when it finishes its run, it'll arrive at the place where the setting is. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, but yeah, so that's, uh, you know, this preset morpher. I think it's a complicated patch. There's some definitely some setup at the beginning, but once you get it set up, then, you know, everything is sort of at your fingertips. So, um, you know, I think it's a, a neat way to use Zoya to expand the capabilities of other stuff. Uh, use Zoya as a MIDI brain. So, you know, again, uh, one other thing I should point out, you know, is that these CC outs don't have to be on the same channel. So you could use uh, four of these parameters to control one pedal and four to control another one, which might be a, a really dramatic way to employ the patch. Um, but yeah, that's that's the idea. Uh, I think it's hopefully a useful utility and sort of idea sparker for, for uh, some of you. And I'm sorry that there's so much talking in this video, but um, I just didn't know how I could do it with little subtext uh, because there is, again, a setup process. So thank you for watching and have a good day.